Manichaeism In modern Persian Ain Meni Ain Imani Chinese, Mo Ni Jiao Pinyin, Mo Ni Jiao was a major religious movement that was founded by the Iranian prophet Mani in Persian, Meni Syriac, Emni per meter Ni, Latin, Manichaeus or Mains from Koine Greek, Mains c. 216-276 in the Sasanian Empire, Manichaeism taught an elaborate dualistic cosmology describing the struggle between a good, spiritual world of light, and an evil, material world of darkness. Through an ongoing process that takes place in human history, light is gradually removed from the world of matter and returned to the world of light, whence it came. Its beliefs were based on local Mesopotamian religious movements and Gnosticism. Manichaeism was quickly successful and spread far through the Aramaic speaking regions. It thrived between the 3rd and 7th centuries, and at its height was one of the most widespread religions in the world. Manichaean churches and scriptures existed as far east as China and as far west as the Roman Empire. It was briefly the main rival to Christianity before the spread of Islam in the competition to replace classical paganism. Manichaeism survived longer in the East than in the West, and it appears to have finally faded away after the 14th century in South China, contemporary to the decline of the Church of the East in Ming China. While most of Manichaeism's original writings have been lost, numerous translations and fragmentary texts have survived. An adherent of Manichaeism is called a Manichaean or Manichaean, or Manichae, especially in older sources. History <inaudible> <inaudible> Life of Mani Mani was an Iranian born in 216 in or near Seleucia Cte Siphon now Al in the Parthian Empire. According to the Cologne Mani Codex, Mani's parents were members of the Jewish Christian Gnostic sect known as the Elsazet. Mani composed seven works, six of which were written in the Syriac language, a late variety of Aramaic. The seventh, the Shaburagan, was written by Mani in Middle Persian and presented by him to the Sasanian emperor, Shapur I. Although there is no proof Shapur I was a Manichaean, he tolerated the spread of Manichaeism and refrained from persecuting it within his empire's boundaries. According to one tradition, it was Mani himself who invented the unique version of the Syriac script known as the Manichaean alphabet, which was used in all of the Manichaean works written within the Sasanian Empire, whether they were in Syriac or Middle Persian, and also for most of the works written within the Uyghur Khaganate. The primary language of Babylon and the administrative and cultural language of the Sassanid Empire at that time was Eastern Middle Aramaic, which included three main dialects, Jewish Babylonian Aramaic the language of the Babylonian Talmud, Mandaean the language of Mandaism, and Syriac, which was the language of Mani, as well as of the Syriac Christians. While Manichaeism was spreading, existing religions such as Zoroastrianism were still popular and Christianity was gaining social and political influence. Although having fewer adherents, Manichaeism won the support of many high-ranking political figures. With the assistance of the Sasanian Empire, Mani began missionary expeditions. After failing to win the favor of the next generation of Persian royalty, and incurring the disapproval of the Zoroastrian clergy, Mani is reported to have died in prison awaiting execution by the Persian Emperor Bahram I. The date of his death is estimated at 276-277. Topic. Influences Mani believed that the teachings of Gautama Buddha, Zoroaster, and Jesus were incomplete, and that his revelations were for the entire world, calling his teachings the religion of light. Manichaean writings indicate that Mani received revelations when he was 12 and again when he was 24, and over this time period he grew dissatisfied with the Elsazet sect he was born into. Mani began preaching at an early age and was possibly influenced by contemporary Babylonian Aramaic movements such as Mandaism, and Aramaic translations of Jewish apocalyptic writings similar to those found at Qumran such as the Book of Enoch literature, and by the Syriac dualist Gnostic writer Bardazan who lived a generation before Mani. With the discovery of the Mani Codex, it also became clear that he was raised in a Jewish Christian baptism sect, the Elsazet, and was influenced by their writings, as well. According to biographies preserved by Ibn al-Nadim and the Persian polymath al-Biruni, he received a revelation as a youth from a spirit, whom he would later call his twin Aramaic, Twem Twem, from which is also derived the name of the Thomas the Apostle, the twin 
His Sisigos coin Greek, Sisigos spouse, partner, in the Cologne Monte Codex, his double, his protective angel or divine self. It taught him truths that he developed into a religion. His divine twin or true self brought Mani to self-realization. He claimed to be the paraclete of the truth, as promised by Jesus in the New Testament. Manichaeism's views on Jesus are described by historians. Jesus in Manichaeism possessed three separate identities, 1. Jesus the Luminous, 2. Jesus the Messiah and 3. Jesus Patibilis the Suffering Jesus, 1. As Jesus the Luminous. His primary role was as supreme revealer and guide and it was he who woke Adam from his slumber and revealed to him the divine origins of his soul and its painful captivity by the body and mixture with matter. Jesus the Messiah was a historical being who was the prophet of the Jews and the forerunner of Mani. However, the Manichaeans believed he was wholly divine. He never experienced human birth as notions of physical conception and birth filled the Manichaeans with horror and the Christian doctrine of virgin birth was regarded as equally obscene. Since he was the light of the world, where was this light, they asked, when he was in the womb of the Virgin? 2. Jesus the Messiah was truly born at his baptism as it was on that occasion that the Father openly acknowledged his sonship. The suffering, death and resurrection of this Jesus were in appearance only as they had no salvific value but were an exemplum of the suffering and eventual deliverance of the human soul and a prefiguration of Manny's own martyrdom. 3. The pain suffered by the imprisoned light particles in the whole of the visible universe, on the other hand, was real and imminent. This was symbolized by the mystic placing of the cross whereby the wounds of the passion of our souls are set forth. On this mystical cross of light was suspended the suffering Jesus, Jesus Patibilis, who was the life and salvation of man. This mystica cruxificio was present in every tree, herb, fruit, vegetable and even stones and the soil. This constant and universal suffering of the captive soul is exquisitely expressed in one of the Coptic Manichaean Psalms. Historians also note that Mani declared himself to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Manichaean tradition is also noted to have claimed that Mani was the reincarnation of different religious figures such as Buddha, Krishna, Zoroaster, and Jesus. Other than incorporating the symbols and doctrine of dominant religious traditions, Manichaeism also incorporated the symbols and deities of indigenous traditions, in particular the Hindu deity Ganesha into its fold, demonstrated by the image available in the article, Manichaean Art and Calligraphy, by Hans Joachim Klimkat. Mani was claiming to be the reincarnation of the Buddha, Lord Krishna, Zoroaster and Jesus depending on the context in which he was carrying out his preachings. Such strategic claims fostered a spirit of toleration among the Manichaeans and the other religious communities and this particular feature greatly assisted them in gaining the approval of authorities to practice in different regions along the Silk Road. Academics also note that since much of what is known about Manichaeism comes from later 10th and 11th century Muslim historians like al-Biruni and especially Ibn al-Nadim and his theorist, Islamic authors ascribe to Mani the claim to be the seal of the prophets. In reality, for Mani the expression, seal of prophecy, refers to his disciples, who testify for the veracity of his message, as a seal does. Another source of Mani's scriptures was original Aramaic writings relating to the Book of Enoch literature see the Book of Enoch and the Second Book of Enoch, as well as an otherwise unknown section of the Book of Enoch called the Book of Giants. This book was quoted directly, and expanded on by Mani, becoming one of the original six Syriac writings of the Manichaean Church. Besides brief references by non-Manichaean authors through the centuries, no original sources of the Book of Giants which is actually part six of the Book of Enoch were available until the 20th century, scattered fragments of both the original Aramaic, Book of Giants which were analyzed and published by Joseph Millick in 1976 and of the Manichaean version of the same name analyzed and published by Walter Bruno Henning in 1943 were found with the discovery in the 20th century of the Dead Sea Scrolls in the Judean Desert and the Manichaean writings of the Uyghur Manichaean Kingdom in Turpin. Henning wrote in his analysis of them, it is noteworthy that Mani, who was brought up and spent most of his life in a province of the Persian Empire, and whose mother belonged to a famous Parthian family, did not make any use of the Iranian mythological tradition. There can no longer be any doubt that the Iranian names of Sam, Nariman, etc., that appear in the Persian and Sogdian versions of the Book of the Giants, did not figure in the original edition, written by Mani in the Syriac language. 
By comparing the cosmology in the Book of Enoch literature and the Book of Giants, alongside the description of the Manichaean myth, scholars have observed that the Manichaean cosmology can be described as being based, in part, on the description of the cosmology developed in detail in the Book of Enoch literature. This literature describes the being that the prophets saw in their ascent to heaven, as a king who sits on a throne at the highest of the heavens. In the Manichaean description, this being, the great king of honor, becomes a deity who guards the entrance to the world of light, placed at the seventh of ten heavens. In the Aramaic Book of Enoch, in the Qumran writings in general, and in the original Syriac section of Manichaean scriptures quoted by Theodore bar Konai, he is called Malka Rabba de Ikara. The great king of honor, Mani was also influenced by writings of the Assyrian Gnostic Bardazan 154-222, who, like Mani, wrote in Syriac, and presented a dualistic interpretation of the world in terms of light and darkness, in combination with elements from Christianity. Noting Mani's travels to the Kushan Empire several religious paintings in Bamiyan are attributed to him at the beginning of his proselytizing career, Richard Foltz postulates Buddhist influences in Manichaeism, Buddhist influences were significant in the formation of Mani's religious thought. The transmigration of souls became a Manichaean belief, and the quadripartite structure of the Manichaean community, divided between male and female monks the elect and lay followers the hearers who supported them, appears to be based on that of the Buddhist Sangha. The Kushan monk Lokaksima began translating Pure Land Buddhist texts into Chinese in the century prior to Mani arriving there, and the Chinese texts of Manichaeism are full of uniquely Buddhist terms taken directly from these Chinese Pure Land scriptures, including the term, Pure Land, Jingtu Jingtu itself. However, the central object of veneration in Pure Land Buddhism, Amitabha, the Buddha of Infinite Light, does not appear in Chinese Manichaeism, and seems to have been replaced by another deity. Topic. Spread Manichaeism spread with extraordinary speed through both the East and West. It reached Rome through the Apostle Sadiq by 280, who was also in Egypt in 244 and 251. It was flourishing in the Fayyam in 290. Manichaean monasteries existed in Rome in 312 during the time of Pope Multiades. In 291, persecution arose in the Sasanian Empire with the murder of the Apostle Sisson by Emperor Barham II, and the slaughter of many Manichaeans. In 296, Diocletian decreed against the Manichaeans, We order that their organizers and leaders be subject to the final penalties and condemned to the fire with their abominable scriptures. This resulted in martyrdom for many in Egypt and North Africa see Diocletian persecution. By 354, Hilary of Poitiers wrote that Manichaeism was a significant force in Roman Gaul. In 381, Christians requested Theodosius I to strip Manichaeans of their civil rights. Starting in 382, the emperor issued a series of edicts to suppress Manichaeism and punish its followers. Augustine of Hippo 354 converted to Christianity from Manichaeism in the year 387. This was shortly after the Roman Emperor Theodosius I had issued a decree of death for all Manichaean monks in 382 and shortly before he declared Christianity to be the only legitimate religion for the Roman Empire in 391. Due to the heavy persecution, the religion almost disappeared from Western Europe in the 5th century and from the eastern portion of the empire in the 6th century. According to his confessions, after nine or ten years of adhering to the Manichaean faith as a member of the group of hearers, Augustine became a Christian and a potent adversary of Manichaeism which he expressed in writing against his Manichaean opponent Faustus of Maleve, seeing their beliefs that knowledge was the key to salvation as too passive and not able to affect any change in one's life. I still thought that it is not we who sin but some other nature that sins within us. It flattered my pride to think that I incurred no guilt and, when I did wrong, not to confess it. I preferred to excuse myself and blame this unknown thing which was in me but was not part of me. The truth, of course, was that it was all my own self, and my own impiety had divided me against myself. My sin was all the more incurable because I did not think myself a sinner. 
Some modern scholars have suggested that Manichaean ways of thinking influenced the development of some of Augustine's ideas, such as the nature of good and evil, the idea of hell, the separation of groups into elect, hearers, and sinners, and the hostility to the flesh and sexual activity, and his dualistic theology. These influences of Manichaeism in Augustine's Christian thinking may well have been part of the conflict between Augustine and Pelagius, a British monk whose theology, being less influenced by the Latin Church, was non-dualistic, and one that saw the created order, and mankind in particular, as having a divine core, rather than a darkness at its core. How Manichaeism might have influenced Christianity continues to be debated. Manichaeism could have influenced the Bogomils, Paulicians, and Cathars. However, these groups left few records, and the link between them and Manichaeans is tenuous. Regardless of its accuracy, the charge of Manichaeism was leveled at them by contemporary Orthodox opponents, who often tried to make contemporary heresies conform to those combated by the Church Fathers. Whether the dualism of the Paulicians, Bogomils, and Cathars and their belief that the world was created by a satanic demiurge were due to influence from Manichaeism is impossible to determine. The Cathars apparently adopted the Manichaean principles of church organization. Priscillian and his followers may also have been influenced by Manichaeism. The Manichaeans preserved many apocryphal Christian works, such as the Acts of Thomas, that would otherwise have been lost. Manichaeism maintained a sporadic and intermittent existence in the West Mesopotamia, Africa, Spain, France, North Italy, the Balkans for a thousand years, and flourished for a time in Persia and even further east in northern India, western China, and Tibet. While it had long been thought that Manichaeism arrived in China only at the end of the 7th century, a recent archaeological discovery demonstrated that it was already known there in the second half of the 6th century. Some Sogdians in Central Asia believed in the religion. Uyghur Khagan Boku Tekken converted to the religion in 763 after a three days discussion with its preachers. The Babylonian headquarters sent high rank clerics to Uyghur, and Manichaeism remained the state religion for about a century before the collapse of the Uyghur Khaganate in 840. In the east, it spread along trade routes as far as Chang'an, the capital of Tang, China. After the Tang dynasty, some Manichaean groups participated in peasant movements. The religion was used by many rebel leaders to mobilize followers. In the Song and Yuan dynasties of China remnants of Manichaeism continued to leave a legacy contributing to sects such as the Red Turbans. During the Song dynasty, the Manichaeans were derogatorily referred by the Chinese as Chikai Simo meaning that they abstain from meat and worship demons. An account in Fozu Tongji, an important historiography of Buddhism in China compiled by Buddhist scholars during 1258–1269, says that the Manichans worshipped the White Buddha, and their leader wore a violet headgear, while the followers wore white costumes. Many Manichaeans took part in rebellions against the Song government and were eventually quelled. After that, all governments were suppressive against Manichaeism and its followers, and the religion was banned by the Ming dynasty in 1370. Manichaeans in Iran tried to assimilate their religion along with Islam in the Muslim caliphates. Relatively little is known about the religion during the first century of Islamic rule. During the early caliphates, Manichaeism attracted many followers. It had a significant appeal among the Muslim society, especially among the elites. Due to the appeal of its teachings, many Muslims adopted the ideas of its theology and some even became dualists. An apologia for Manichaeism ascribed to Ibn al-Mukhafa defended its phantasmagorical cosmogony and attacked the fideism of Islam and other monotheistic religions. The Manichaeans had sufficient structure to have a head of their community. Under the 8th century Abbasid Caliphate, Arabic Zindiq and the adjectival term Zandika could denote many different things, though it seems primarily, or at least initially, to have signified a follower of Manichaeism, however, its true meaning is not known. In the 9th century, it is reported that Caliph al Mamun tolerated a community of Manichaeans. During the early Abbasid period, the Manichaeans underwent persecution. The third Abbasid caliph, al-Mahdi, persecuted the Manichaeans, establishing an inquisition against dualists who if being found guilty of heresy refused to renounce their beliefs, were executed. Their persecution was finally ended in 780s by Harun al-Rashid. During the reign of the caliph al-Muqtadr, many Manichaeans fled from Mesopotamia to Khorasan from fear of persecution and the base of the religion was later shifted to Samarkand.
Manichaeism claimed to present the complete version of teachings that were corrupted and misinterpreted by the followers of its predecessors Adam, Zoroaster, Buddha and Jesus. Accordingly, as it spread, it adapted new deities from other religions into forms it could use for its scriptures. Its original Aramaic texts already contained stories of Jesus. When they moved eastward and were translated into Iranian languages, the names of the Manichaean deities or angels were often transformed into the names of Zoroastrian Yazatas. Thus Abba Drabuda, the father of greatness, the highest Manichaean deity of light, in Middle Persian texts might either be translated literally as pid i Wazirja, or substituted with the name of the deity Zerwan. Similarly, the Manichaean primal figure Nasa Kadmaya, the original man, was rendered Ormazd Bey, after the Zoroastrian god Ormazd. This process continued in Manichaeism's meeting with Chinese Buddhism, where, for example, the original Aramaic Kri Karya the call from the world of light to those seeking rescue from the world of darkness, becomes identified in the Chinese scriptures with Guanyin, Guanyin or Avalokiteshvara in Sanskrit, literally, watching, perceiving sounds of the world, the bodhisattva of compassion. Persecution and extinction Manichaeism was repressed by the Sasanian Empire. In 291, persecution arose in the Persian Empire with the murder of the Apostle Sisson by Baram II, and the slaughter of many Manichaeans. In 296, the Roman Emperor Diocletian decreed all the Manichaean leaders to be burnt alive along with the Manichaean scriptures and many Manichaeans in Europe and North Africa were killed. This policy of persecution was also followed by his successors. Theodosius I issued a decree of death for all Manichaean monks in 382 AD. The religion was vigorously attacked and persecuted by both the Christian Church and the Roman state. Augustine of Hippo, one of the early doctors of the Catholic Church was a Manichaean until his conversion to Christianity in 386. He was never persecuted for this and he freely converted. Due to the heavy persecution upon its followers in the Roman Empire, the religion almost disappeared from Western Europe in the 5th century and from the eastern portion of the empire in the 6th century. In 732, Emperor Xuanzang of Tang banned any Chinese from converting to the religion, saying it was a heretic religion that was confusing people by claiming to be Buddhism. However, the foreigners who followed the religion were allowed to practice it without punishment. After the fall of the Uyghur Khaganate in 840, which was the chief patron of Manichaeism which was also the state religion of the Khaganate in China, all Manichaean temples in China except in the two capitals and Taiyuan were closed down and never reopened since these temples were viewed as a symbol of foreign arrogance by the Chinese see Kaon, even those that were allowed to remain open did not for long. The Manichaean temples were attacked by Chinese people who burned the images and idols of these temples. Manichaean priests were ordered to wear hanfu instead of their traditional clothing, which was viewed as un-Chinese. In 843, Emperor Wuzong of Tang gave the order to kill all Manichaean clerics as part of his great anti-Buddhist persecution, and over half died. They were made to look like Buddhists by the authorities, their heads were shaved, they were made to dress like Buddhist monks and then killed. Although the religion was mostly forbidden and its followers persecuted thereafter in China, it survived till the 14th century in the country. Under the Song dynasty, its followers were derogatorily referred to with the Chengyu Kai Kai Si Mo Pinyin, Kai Kai Si Mo Vegetarian Demon Worshippers. Many Manichaeans took part in rebellions against the Song dynasty. They were quelled by Song China and were suppressed and persecuted by all successive governments before the Mongol Yuan dynasty. In 1370, the religion was banned through an edict of the Ming dynasty, whose Hung Wu emperor had a personal dislike for the religion. Its core teaching influences many religious sects in China, including the White Lotus Movement. According to Wendy Doniger, Manichaeism may have continued to exist in the modern East Turkestan region until the Mongol conquest in the 13th century. Manichaeans also suffered persecution for some time under the Abbasid Caliphate of Baghdad. In 780, the third Abbasid caliph, al-Mahdi, started a campaign of inquisition against those who were dualist heretics, or Manichaeans, called the Zindiq. He appointed a master of the heretics, Arabic, al quarter Saab Sahib al zanadika an official whose task was to pursue and investigate suspected dualists, who were then examined by the caliph. Those found guilty who refused to abjure their beliefs were executed. 
This persecution continued under his successor, Caliph al-Hadi, and continued for some time during reign of Harun al-Rashid, who finally abolished it and ended it. During the reign of the 18th Abbasid Caliph al-Muqtadr, many Manichaeans fled from Mesopotamia to Khorasan from fear of persecution by him and about 500 of them assembled in Samarkand. The base of the religion was later shifted to this city, which became their new patriarchate. Later movements accused of «neo-Manichaeism» During the Middle Ages, several movements emerged that were collectively described as «Manichaean» by the Catholic Church, and persecuted as Christian heresies through the establishment, in 1184, of the Inquisition. They included the Cathar churches of Western Europe. Other groups sometimes referred to as «neo-Manichaean» were the Paulician movement, which arose in Armenia, and the Bogomils in Bulgaria. An example of this usage can be found in the published edition of the Latin Cathar text, the Liber de Duobus Principis Book of the Two Principles, which was described as «neo-Manichaean» by its publishers. As there is no presence of Manichaean mythology or church terminology in the writings of these groups, there has been some dispute among historians as to whether these groups were descendants of Manichaeism. Topic. Present day Some sites are preserved in Xinjiang and Fujian in China. The Kaoan Temple is the only fully intact Manichaean building, though it later became associated with Buddhism. Several small groups claim to continue to practice this faith. Topic. Teachings and beliefs General Manny's teaching dealt with the origin of evil, by addressing a theoretical part of the problem of evil by denying the omnipotence of God and postulating two opposite powers. Manichaean theology taught a dualistic view of good and evil. A key belief in Manichaeism is that the powerful, though not omnipotent good power God, was opposed by the semi-eternal evil power Satan. Humanity, the world and the soul are seen as the byproduct of the battle between God's proxy, primal man, and Satan. The human person is seen as a battleground for these powers, the soul defines the person, but it is under the influence of both light and dark. This contention plays out over the world as well as the human body. Neither the earth nor the flesh were seen as intrinsically evil, but rather possessed portions of both light and dark. Natural phenomena such as rain were seen as the physical manifestation of this spiritual contention. Therefore, the Manichaean worldview explained the existence of evil by positing a flawed creation in the formation of which God took no part and which constituted rather the product of a rebellion by Satan against God. Topic: <laughs> Cosmogony Manichaeism presented an elaborate description of the conflict between the spiritual world of light and the material world of darkness. The beings of both the world of darkness and the world of light have names. There are numerous sources for the details of the Manichaean belief. There are two portions of Manichaean scriptures that are probably the closest thing to the original Manichaean writings in their original languages that will ever be available. These are the Syriac Aramaic quotation by the Nestorian Christian Theodore Bar Konai, in his Syriac, Book of Sholia, Ketba de Skolans, 8th century, and the Middle Persian sections of Mani's Shaburagan discovered at Turpin, a summary of Mani's teachings prepared for Shapur I. These two sections are probably the original Syriac and Middle Persian written by Mani. From these and other sources, it is possible to derive an almost complete description of the detailed Manichaean vision. A complete list of Manichaean deities is outlined below. According to Mani, the unfolding of the universe takes place with three creations. The first creation, originally, good and evil existed in two completely separate realms, one the world of light, ruled by the Father of Greatness together with his five Shahinas divine attributes of light, and the other the world of darkness, ruled by the King of Darkness. At a certain point, the Kingdom of Darkness notices the world of light, becomes greedy for it and attacks it. The Father of Greatness, in the first of three, creations, or calls, Calls to the Mother of Life, who sends her son Original Man Nasa Kadmaya in Aramaic, to battle with the attacking powers of darkness, which include the demon of greed. 
The original man is armed with five different shields of light reflections of the five Shahinas, which he loses to the forces of darkness in the ensuing battle, described as a kind of bait to trick the forces of darkness, as the forces of darkness greedily consume as much light as they can. When the original man comes to, he is trapped among the forces of darkness. The second creation, then the father of greatness begins the second creation, calling to the living spirit, who calls to his five sons, and sends a call to the original man call then becomes a Manichaean deity. An answer, answer becomes another Manichaean deity then returns from the original man to the world of light. The mother of life, the living spirit, and his five sons begin to create the universe from the bodies of the evil beings of the world of darkness, together with the light that they have swallowed. Ten heavens and eight earths are created, all consisting of various mixtures of the evil material beings from the world of darkness and the swallowed light. The sun, moon, and stars are all created from light recovered from the world of darkness. The waxing and waning of the moon is described as the moon filling with light, which passes to the sun, then through the Milky Way, and eventually back to the world of light. The third creation, great demons called archons in Bar Konai's account are hung out over the heavens, and then the father of greatness begins the third creation. Light is recovered from out of the material bodies of the male and female evil beings and demons, by causing them to become sexually aroused in greed, towards beautiful images of the beings of light, such as the third messenger and the virgins of light. However, as soon as the light is expelled from their bodies and falls to the earth some in the form of abortions, the source of fallen angels in the Manichaean myth, the evil beings continue to swallow up as much of it as they can to keep the light inside of them. This results eventually in the evil beings swallowing huge quantities of light, copulating, and producing Adam and Eve. The Father of Greatness then sends the radiant Jesus to awaken Adam, and to enlighten him to the true source of the light that is trapped in his material body. Adam and Eve, however, eventually copulate, and produce more human beings, trapping the light in bodies of mankind throughout human history. The appearance of the prophet Mani was another attempt by the world of light to reveal to mankind the true source of the spiritual light imprisoned within their material bodies. Outline of the beings and events in the Manichaean mythos Beginning with the time of its creation by Mani, the Manichaean religion had a detailed description of deities and events that took place within the Manichaean scheme of the universe. In every language and region that Manichaeism spread to, these same deities reappear, whether it is in the original Syriac quoted by Theodore Bar Konai, or the Latin terminology given by St. Augustine from Mani's Epistola Fundamenti, or the Persian and Chinese translations found as Manichaeism spread eastward. While the original Syriac retained the original description that Mani created, the transformation of the deities through other languages and cultures produced incarnations of the deities not implied in the original Syriac writings. This process began in Mani's lifetime, with the father of greatness, for example, being translated into Middle Persian as Zervan, a Zoroastrian supreme being. The world of light The father of greatness Syriac, B. Derb Abba Drabuta, Middle Persian, Pid I Wuzurja, or the Zoroastrian deity Zerwan, Parthian, Pidar Wuzurgift, Pidar Roshan. His five Shahinas Syriac, Hm Shkinth Kamish Shikinate, Chinese, Wu Zhang Da Wu Zhang Da, Five Great Ones. The Great Spirit Middle Persian, Waxish Zindag, Waxish Yazdar, Latin, Spiritus Potens. The first creation The mother of life Syriac, M. Dai Ima Daye. The first man Syriac, Ench Kudmi Nasa Kadmaya, Middle Persian, Ormuz Bey, the Zoroastrian god of light and goodness, Latin, Primus Homo. His five sons the five light elements, Middle Persian, Amarispandan, Parthian, Panjrosan Ether Middle Persian, Farwar, Parthian, Arda. Wind, Middle Persian and Parthian, Wad. Light, Middle Persian and Parthian, Rosan. Water, Middle Persian and Parthian, Ab. Fire, Middle Persian and Parthian, Adder. His sixth son, the Answer God, Syriac, Ni Anya, Middle Persian, X Rashtag, Chinese, Shi Ji Shi Ji, the Power of Wisdom, a Chinese Bodhisattva, the answer sent by the first man to the call from the world of light. 
The living self made up of the five elements, Middle Persian, Griw Zindag, Griw Rosin. The second creation The friend of the lights Syriac, Hbib Enhider Havib Nihir. Calls to The great builder Syriac, BNDRB Ban Rabba. In charge of creating the new world that will separate the darkness from the light. He calls to the Living Spirit Syriac, Ruhai Ruha Heya, Middle Persian, Muryazd, Chinese, Jing Huo Feng Jing Feng, Latin, Spiritus Vivens. Acts as a demiurge, creating the structure of the material world. His five sons Syriac, Hmshbin Wee Hamsa Benawai. The Keeper of the Splendor Syriac, Speshen Zivs Fat Ziwa, Latin, Splendichinens, Chinese. Tweem holds up the ten heavens from above. The King of Glory, Syriac, Milk Shub Mlex Suvha, Latin, Rex Gloriosus, Chinese, De Kang De Zhang, Earth Treasury, a Chinese Bodhisattva. The Adamas of Light, Syriac, Demos Nawur Adamus Nura, Latin, Adamas, Chinese, Zhang Mo Shi Zhang Mo Shi. Fights with and overcomes an evil being in the image of the King of Darkness. The Great King of Honor, Syriac, Milk Arbi Diker Malka Rabba Dikara, Dead Sea Scrolls Aramaic, Milk Arbi Diker Malka Rabba de Ikara, Latin, Rex Honoris, Chinese, Shi Tian Wang Shishin Wang, Ten Heaven King, a being that plays a central role in the Book of Enoch, originally written in Aramaic, as well as Manny's Syriac version of it, the Book of Giants. Sits in the seventh heaven of the ten heavens, compare Buddhist division of the ten realms, and guards the entrance to the world of light. Atlas Syriac, SBL Sebola, Latin, Atlas, Chinese, Kai Shi Zhu Chishiju. Supports the eight worlds from below. His sixth son, the Call God Syriac, Kri Karia, Middle Persian, Padvakstag, Chinese, Guan Yin Guan Yin, watching, perceiving sounds of the world. The Chinese Bodhisattva of Compassion. Sent from the living spirit to awaken the first man from his battle with the forces of darkness. The Third Creation The Third Messenger Syriac, Izgad Izgada, Middle Persian Narasayazid, Parthian, Heritig Frestag, Latin, Tertius Legatus Jesus the Splendor Syriac, Ish Ziv Isho Ziwa. Sent to awaken Adam and Eve to the source of the spiritual light trapped within their physical bodies. The Maiden of Light the Twelve Virgins of Light Syriac, Tritzer Btw Trat Esra Bitulti, Middle Persian Kanagan Rosnan, Chinese, Ri Gong Shi Er Wanu Ri Gong Shi Er Huanu. Reflected in the Twelve Constellations of the Zodiac. The Column of Glory Syriac, Stun Shub Estan Suvha, Middle Persian, Esaros Are, from Sreosha, Chinese, Su Lu Sha Luo Yi Su Lu Shalo Yi and Lu Shi Na, Lushina, both phonetic from Middle Persian Esaros Are. The path that souls take back to the world of light, corresponds to the Milky Way. The Great Noose His Five Limbs Reason Mind Intelligence Thought Understanding The Just Justice The Last God The World of Darkness the Prince of Darkness Syriac, Milkshauk Mlex Hesoxa, Middle Persian, Ahriman, the Zoroastrian Supreme Evil Being. His five evil kingdoms evil counterparts of the five elements of light, the lowest being the Kingdom of Darkness. His son Syriac, Shkon Ashaklan, Middle Persian, As, from the Zoroastrian demon, Azi Dahaka. His son's mate Syriac, Enbirul Nevroel. Their offspring, Adam and Eve Middle Persian, Gemard and Murdianog. Giants, fallen angels, also abortions, Syriac, yht yat, abortions, or those that fell, also, lang equals, syr, greater than arquant arcanada, the Gnostic archons, egregoroi egregoroi, giants, related to the story of the fallen angels in the Book of Enoch which Mani used extensively in the Book of Giants, and the Enpilim Nephilim described in Genesis, 6-1-4. Topic: The Manichaean Church. Topic: Organization. 
The Manichaean Church was divided into the elect, who had taken upon themselves the vows of Manichaeism, and the hearers, those who had not, but still participated in the Church. The terms for these divisions were already common since the days of early Christianity. In Chinese writings, the Middle Persian and Parthian terms are transcribed phonetically instead of being translated into Chinese. These were recorded by Augustine of Hippo. The leader, Syriac, Kung Kung, Parthian, Yamig, Chinese, Yan Mo, Pinyin, Yan Mo, Mani's designated successor, seated as patriarch at the head of the church, originally in Cte Siphon, from the 9th century in Samarkand. Two notable leaders were Mar Sisson or Sisinios, the first successor of Mani, and Abu Halal al Dahori, an 8th century leader. Twelve apostles, Latin, Magistri, Syriac, Shlai. Lihe, Middle Persian, Mozag, Chinese, Mudu Pinyin, Mudu. Three of Mani's original apostles were Mar Pati, Patikios, Mani's father, Aqua and Mar Ammo. Seventy-two bishops, Latin, Episcopi, Syriac, Pscup Episcope, Middle Persian, Aspasag, Aftadan, Chinese, Sa Bo Sai Pinyin, Sabose or Chinese, Fu Duo Dan Pinyin, Fuduodan, see also, seventy disciples. One of Mani's original disciples who was specifically referred to as a bishop was Mar Adda. 360 presbyters Latin, presbytery, Syriac, Qushish K, Middle Persian, Mahistan, Chinese, Mo Shi Shi De Pinyin, Moxish De. The general body of the elect Latin, Electi, Syriac, Majmishan per meter, Amni, Middle Persian, Ardawan or Denauer, Chinese, Aluo Huan Pinyin, Alohuan or Chinese, Dian Na Wu Pinyin, Dianawu. The hearers Latin, Auditores, Syriac, Shmu Mo E, Middle Persian, Neoshigan, Chinese, No Sha Yan Pinyin, No Shayan. Topic: Religious practices. The most important religious observance of the Manichaeans was the Bema Fest, observed annually. The Bema was originally, in the Syriac Christian churches, a seat placed in the middle of the nave on which the bishop would preside and from which the gospel would be read. In the Manichaean places of worship, the throne was a five-stepped altar, covered by precious cloths, symbolizing the five classes of the hierarchy. The top of the Bema was always empty, as it was the seat of Mani. The Bema was celebrated at the vernal equinox, was preceded by fasts, and symbolized the passion of Mani, thus it was strictly parallel to the Christian Easter. While it is often presumed that the Bema seat was empty, there is some evidence from the Coptic Manichaean Bema Psalms, that the Bema seat may have actually contained a copy of Mani's picture book, the Arzung. <laughs> Primary sources Mani wrote either seven or eight books, which contained the teachings of the religion. Only scattered fragments and translations of the originals remain. The original six Syriac writings are not preserved, although their Syriac names have been. There are also fragments and quotations from them. A long quotation, preserved by the 8th century Nestorian Christian author Theodore Bar Konai, shows that in the original Syriac Aramaic writings of Mani there was no influence of Iranian or Zoroastrian terms. The terms for the Manichaean deities in the original Syriac writings are in Aramaic. The adaptation of Manichaeism to the Zoroastrian religion appears to have begun in Mani's lifetime however, with his writing of the Middle Persian Shaburagan, his book dedicated to the Sasanian emperor, Shapur I. In it, there are mentions of Zoroastrian divinities such as Ahura Mazda, Angra Mainu, and As. Manichaeism is often presented as a Persian religion, mostly due to the vast number of Middle Persian, Parthian, and Sogdian as well as Turkish texts discovered by German researchers near Turpin in what is now Xinjiang, China, during the early 1900s. However, from the vantage point of its original Syriac descriptions as quoted by Theodore Bar Konai and outlined above, Manichaeism may be better described as a unique phenomenon of Aramaic Babylonia, occurring in proximity to two other new Aramaic religious phenomena, Talmudic Judaism and Mandaism, which also appeared in Babylonia in roughly the 3rd century. The original, but now lost, six sacred books of Manichaeism were composed in Syriac Aramaic, and translated into other languages to help spread the religion. As they spread to the east, the Manichaean writings passed through Middle Persian, Parthian, Sogdian, Tocharian, and ultimately Uyghur and Chinese translations. As they spread to the west, they were translated into Greek, Coptic, and Latin. 
Henning describes how this translation process evolved and influenced the Manichaeans of Central Asia. Beyond doubt, Sogdian was the national language of the majority of clerics and propagandists of the Manichaean faith in Central Asia. Middle Persian Parsig, and to a lesser degree, Parthian Palavanig, occupied the position held by Latin in the medieval church. The founder of Manichaeism had employed Syriac his own language as his medium, but conveniently he had written at least one book in Middle Persian, and it is likely that he himself had arranged for the translation of some or all of his numerous writings from Syriac into Middle Persian. Thus the Eastern Manichaeans found themselves entitled to dispense with the study of Mani's original writings, and to continue themselves to reading the Middle Persian edition, it presented small difficulty to them to acquire a good knowledge of the Middle Persian language, owing to its affinity with Sogdian. Topic. Originally written in Syriac The Gospel of Mani Syriac, Wenglion Wawanalihon, Koine Greek, Yuengian Good News, Gospel. Quotations from the first chapter were brought in Arabic by Ibn al-Nadim, who lived in Baghdad at a time when there were still Manichaeans living there, in his 938 book, The Fearest, a catalogue of all written books known to him. The Treasure of Life The Treatise Coptic, Pragmatea Secrets The Book of Giants, original fragments were discovered at Qumran and Turpin. Epistles, Augustine brings quotations, in Latin, from Mani's fundamental epistle in some of his anti-Manichaean works. Psalms and Prayers. A Coptic Manichaean Psalter, discovered in Egypt in the early 1900s, was edited and published by Charles Alberry from Manichaean manuscripts in the Chester Beatty Collection and in the Berlin Academy, 1938-9. Topic. Originally written in Middle Persian The Shaburagan, dedicated to Shapur I, original Middle Persian fragments were discovered at Turpin, quotations were brought in Arabic by al-Biruni. Other books The Artahang, the picture book. In Iranian tradition, this was one of Mani's holy books that became remembered in later Persian history, and was also called Arzang, a Parthian word meaning, worthy, and was beautified with paintings. Therefore, Iranians gave him the title of, the painter. The Kephaliah of the teacher, Kephaliah, discourses, found in Coptic translation. On the origin of his body, the title of the Cologne Mani Codex, a Greek translation of an Aramaic book that describes the early life of Mani. Non-Manichaean works preserved by the Manichaean Church Portions of the Book of Enoch literature such as the Book of Giants Literature relating to the Apostle Thomas who by tradition went to India, and was also venerated in Syria, such as portions of the Syriac the Acts of Thomas, and the Psalms of Thomas. The Gospel of Thomas was also attributed to Manichaeans by Cyril of Jerusalem, a 4th century church father. The legend of Barlam and Husafat passed from an Indian story about the Buddha, through a Manichaean version, before it transformed into the story of a Christian saint in the West. <laughs> later works In later centuries, as Manichaeism passed through Eastern Persian-speaking lands and arrived at the Uyghur Khaganate, Wei Gu Di Guo and eventually the Uyghur Kingdom of Turpin destroyed around 1335, Middle Persian and Parthian prayers a free one or Afrazin, and the Parthian hymn cycles the Huadogman and Angad Rasnan created by Mar Ammo were added to the Manichaean writings. A translation of a collection of these produced the Manichaean Chinese hymn scroll Chinese, Mo Ni Jiao Sha Bu Zan Pinyin, Mo Ni Jiao Sha Bu Zan, which Lu translates as, "...hymns for the lower section i.e. the hearers of the Manichaean religion." In addition to containing hymns attributed to Mani, it contains prayers attributed to Mani's earliest disciples, including Mar Zaku, Mar Ammo and Mar Sisson. Another Chinese work is a complete translation of the Sermon of the Light Noose, presented as a discussion between Mani and his disciple Ada. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Critical and polemic sources. 
Until discoveries in the 1900s of original sources, the only sources for Manichaeism were descriptions and quotations from non-Manichaean authors, either Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, or Zoroastrian. While often criticizing Manichaeism, they also quoted directly from Manichaean scriptures. This enabled Isaac de Beausober, writing in the 18th century, to create a comprehensive work on Manichaeism, relying solely on anti-Manichaean sources. Thus quotations and descriptions in Greek and Arabic have long been known to scholars, as have the long quotations in Latin by St. Augustine, and the extremely important quotation in Syriac by Theodore bar Konai. Topic: <laughs> Patristic depictions of Mani and Manichaeism. Eusebius commented as follows: The error of the Manichees, which commenced at this time. Topic: <laughs> Act to Archelai. An example of how inaccurate some of these accounts could be is seen in the account of the origins of Manichaeism contained in the Act to Archelai. This was a Greek anti-Manichaean work written before 348, most well known in its Latin version, which was regarded as an accurate account of Manichaeism until refuted by Isaac de Beausober in the 18th century. In the time of the Apostles there lived a man named Scythianus, who is described as coming from Scythia, and also as being a Saracen by race. Ex genere Saracenorum. He settled in Egypt, where he became acquainted with the wisdom of the Egyptians and invented the religious system that was afterwards known as Manichaeism. Finally he emigrated to Palestine, and, when he died, his writings passed into the hands of his sole disciple, a certain Terebinthus. The latter betook himself to Babylonia, assumed the name of Buddha, and endeavored to propagate his master's teaching. But he, like Scythianus, gained only one disciple, who was an old woman. After a while he died, in consequence of a fall from the roof of a house, and the books that he had inherited from Scythianus became the property of the old woman, who, on her death, bequeathed them to a young man named Corbicius, who had been her slave. Corbicius thereupon changed his name to Mains, studied the writings of Scythianus, and began to teach the doctrines that they contained, with many additions of his own. He gained three disciples, named Thomas, Adas, and Hermas. About this time the son of the Persian king fell ill, and Mainz undertook to cure him. The prince, however, died, whereupon Mainz was thrown into prison. He succeeded in escaping, but eventually fell into the hands of the king, by whose order he was flayed, and his corpse was hung up at the city gate. A. A. Bevan, who quoted this story, commented that it has no claim to be considered historical. View of Judaism in the Acta Archelae According to Hegemonius's portrayal of Mani, the evil demiurge who created the world was the Jewish Jehovah. Hegemonius reports that Mani said, It is the prince of darkness who spoke with Moses, the Jews and their priests. Thus the Christians, the Jews, and the pagans are involved in the same error when they worship this God. For he leads them astray in the lusts he taught them. He goes on to state, Now, he who spoke with Moses, the Jews, and the priests he says is the archont of darkness, and the Christians, Jews, and pagans ethnic are one and the same, as they revere the same God. For in his aspirations he seduces them, as he is not the God of truth. And so therefore all those who put their hope in the God who spoke with Moses and the prophets have this in store for themselves, namely, to be bound with him, because they did not put their hope in the God of truth. For that one spoke with them only according to their own aspirations. Central Asian and Iranian primary sources In the early 1900s, original Manichaean writings started to come to light when German scholars led by Albert Grunwedel, and then by Albert von Le Koch, began excavating at Gaocheng, the ancient site of the Manichaean Uyghur kingdom near Turpan, in Chinese Turkestan destroyed around AD 1300. While most of the writings they uncovered were in very poor condition, there were still hundreds of pages of Manichaean scriptures, written in three Iranian languages Middle Persian, Parthian, and Sogdian and Old Uyghur. These writings were taken back to Germany, and were analyzed and published at the Proish Akademie der Wissenschaften in Berlin, by Le Koch and others, such as Friedrich W. K. Muller and Walter Bruno Henning. 
While the vast majority of these writings were written in a version of the Syriac script known as Manichaean script, the German researchers, perhaps for lack of suitable fonts, published most of them using the Hebrew alphabet which could easily be substituted for the 22 Syriac letters. Perhaps the most comprehensive of these publications was Manichaeisch Dogmatik aus Chinesischen und Iranischen Texten Manichaean Dogma from Chinese and Iranian Texts, by Ernst Waldschmidt and Wolfgang Lenz, published in Berlin in 1933. More than any other research work published before or since, this work printed, and then discussed, the original key Manichaean texts in the original scripts, and consists chiefly of sections from Chinese texts, and Middle Persian and Parthian texts transcribed with the Hebrew alphabet. After the Nazi party gained power in Germany, the Manichaean writings continued to be published during the 1930s, but the publishers no longer used Hebrew letters, instead transliterating the texts into Latin letters. Topic. Coptic primary sources Additionally, in 1930, German researchers in Egypt found a large body of Manichaean works in Coptic. Though these were also damaged, hundreds of complete pages survived and, beginning in 1933, were analyzed and published in Berlin before World War II, by German scholars such as Hans Jakob Polotsky. Some of these Coptic Manichaean writings were lost during the war. Topic. Chinese primary sources After the success of the German researchers, French scholars visited China and discovered what is perhaps the most complete set of Manichaean writings, written in Chinese. These three Chinese writings, all found at the Mogao Caves among the Dunhuang manuscripts, and all written before the 9th century, are today kept in London, Paris, and Beijing. Some of the scholars involved with their initial discovery and publication were Eduard Chavon, Paul Pelliot, and Oral Stein. The original studies and analyses of these writings, along with their translations, first appeared in French, English, and German, before and after World War II. The complete Chinese texts themselves were first published in Tokyo, Japan in 1927, in the Taisho Tripitaka, Volume 54. While in the last 30 years or so they have been republished in both Germany with a complete translation into German, alongside the 1927 Japanese edition, and China, the Japanese publication remains the standard reference for the Chinese texts. <laughs> Greek life of Mani, Cologne Codex In Egypt, a small codex was found and became known through antique dealers in Cairo. It was purchased by the University of Cologne in 1969. Two of its scientists, Henriks and Conan, produced the first edition known since as the Cologne Mani Codex, which was published in four articles in the Zeitschrift für Papyrologie und Epigraphik. The ancient papyrus manuscript contained a Greek text describing the life of Mani. Thanks to this discovery, much more is known about the man who founded one of the most influential world religions of the past. <inaudible> Figurative use The terms, Manichaean, and Manichaeism, are sometimes used figuratively as a synonym of the more general term, dualist, with respect to a philosophy, outlook or worldview. The terms are often used to suggest that the world view in question simplistically reduces the world to a struggle between good and evil. For example, Zbigniew Brzezinski used the phrase, Manichaean paranoia, in reference to U.S. President George W. Bush's world view in The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, March 14, 2007, Brzezinski elaborated that he meant, the notion that he Bush is leading the forces of good against the empire of evil. Philosopher Franz Fanon frequently invoked the concept of Manichaeism in his discussions of violence between colonizers and the colonized. Author and journalist Glenn Greenwald followed up on the theme in describing Bush in his book A Tragic Legacy, 2007, in the story, The Man Who Shot Snapping Turtles. Published in Memoirs of Hecate County, Edmund Wilson's narrator refers to Asa Stryker's argument as, The Manichaean Heresy, in My Secret History. Author Paul Thoreau's protagonist defines the word Manichaean for the protagonist's son. 
Prior to explaining the word to his son, the protagonist mentions Joseph Conrad's short story The Secret Sharer at least twice in the book, the plot of which also examines the idea of the duality of good and evil. The word in the novel can also be considered a metaphor for the last chapter of the book, Two of Everything 1984, and possibly the novel itself. The term is frequently used by critics to describe the attitudes and foreign policies of the present-day United States and its leaders. <laughs> See also